Welcome back to Silver Nugget Adventure. Today we're going to be covering the electrical system and all the utilities that that supplies. We've been truly overwhelmed by all the support that we've had so far, both from new camper vanners, possibly buying a nugget or looking into buying a nugget, but also the more experienced traveller, and they've been sharing their advice with us. We appreciate all of these comments and thank you for your support. Okay, so without further ado, let's dive in. The Ford Nugget comes with two electrical systems, the 230 volt and the 12 volt circuits. The electrical systems power the fridge, the parking heaters control and fan, the water pump, the lighting, the control panel and the power sockets. We will be covering these areas within the video. We will start by looking at the two electrical systems and how they interact. The 230 volt system is only available when the nugget is connected to the 230 volt connection via the external socket on the left hand side of the vehicle and when the residual current circuit breaker is on. This is the main control panel. It shows that the 230 volt connection is currently plugged in. This is the voltage left on the auxiliary battery. This is ascending at the moment because it's charging but normally would be fixed. It's warning me that there's no water in the tanks. This is the time and this is the outside temperature. The Ford Nugget comes with this lead to connect to the mains. In the UK, we of course have the three pin end, and this is the standard European CEE17 connector. I'll show you how that connects to the van in a second, but before I do that, I'll just explain what we've done. This is a very short lead. It pretty much goes from the van to the ground. Most people have an extension lead of some description, so that's fine. We found though there are a couple of wet days when we would have liked to have charged the van, but I didn't really want the rest of the electricity outside. In addition to that, we also realized that when we go to campsites, we're gonna to need to have a, a proper lead that will take us to the connection on our pitch. So for that reason, we purchased a 25 meter cable. It's got a male and a female end so that we can connect it to the van and also connect it to the hookup. I also have purchased this in addition so that I can connect and plug in at home on a wet day if required. To attach the CEE cable, open the flap of the external mains socket cover. Open the swing cap of the cable, slide the cable cover into the space above the socket until fully inserted and locked in place. Check the RCB is on. The 230 volt system is now live. The RCB protects against overcurrent and short circuits. To test, press the test button when the 230 volt system is live. When active, the 230 volt supply powers the 230 volt sockets and the battery charger. But note, the 12 volt appliances are indirectly fed through the battery charger. Thus, ultimately, the 230 volt supply can power all the systems when available. The battery charger is under the kitchen worktop and is fully automatic. When the 230 volt connection is made and the RCB is turned on, it starts charging the auxiliary battery and the starter's battery. Once full, it will maintain a full charge and it is not possible to overcharge. When ready to disconnect, push down the lever on the left hand side and pull out. This brings us neatly to the auxiliary batteries. The two batteries are wide and parallel and located under the driver's seat. They are charged by the 230 volt system when connected or by the alternator when driving. Good battery care is important to maintain battery health. 
The batteries are technically maintenance free, AGM standing for absorbent matte glass batteries, but you must schedule a mains charge every four weeks as the alternator can only charge to 80% when driving around. It is important that you recharge the batteries as soon as possible after a big decharge. This symbol shows that the 230 volt cable is connected to the van. You can see by this bar scale that the battery is charging. I will now turn off the power cable. You'll see the symbol disappear and now this is permanently coloured showing you the level of charge and there is a display showing you the number of volts. The manual advises to 1. Charge before a journey, 2. During a journey if lots of power is used and not much driving has occurred, 3. Prior to long periods of not being used, or 4. Otherwise scheduling your four weekly full charge for a 24 hour period or longer if you have had a significant deep discharge. If this is not followed, deep discharge may result and can damage your battery. In the event of a deep discharge below 10.5 volts, the heating and cooling systems will be switched off and will not work. Worse still, if the battery drops to a 7 or 8 volt level, the battery charger will not start when the 230 volt attachment is made. Instead, you'd have to start the engine in order to bring up the auxiliary battery voltage to a level and then you can connect the 230 volt power for the battery charger to kick in. Only replace the batteries with approved AGM batteries. The 12 volt system is activated by turning on the main switch. This powers the control panel that controls all of the other utilities. We take each in turn in this video. The 12 volt system can be isolated by switching off the main switch and doing so though will result in the loss of all settings on the control panel. The Nugget has two 230 volt power sockets with a maximum power consumption of 2000 watts. One socket is above the fridge and the other is above the cooker. Note that some camping grounds may only be using a 4 amp or 8 amp fuse to protect their mains supply. This will limit you to a 920 watt to 1840 watt consumption. So bear that in mind. There are three 12 volt sockets. There are two in the rear of the camper van powered by the auxiliary battery and one on the dashboard which is powered by the starter battery. The cooling compartment is powered by the 12 volt system. The cooling compartment is 40 litres. It is possible to get a basket to fit into it, but we do not have this. The compartment is controlled by the main panel. There are five temperature settings. The instructions advise that you cool the compartment before inserting food and drink. And if possible, you should keep the goods that you are inserting in a fridge at home right up until you start your journey. There is a small catch on the left hand side on the wall to hold the lid up to aid filling. The parking heater. Independent of the engine, the parking heater burns diesel to heat the van. The 12 volt system powers the fan and the control system for the heater. From the control panel, you can turn the heater on and off as well as control the temperature. You can use the timer to set three activation times. A nice feature is the auto shut off when the fuel is low to prevent you from becoming stranded. As previously mentioned, if the auxiliary battery drops below 10.5 volt, the heater won't work. You can get around this by starting the engine. Depending on external conditions, check the exhaust occasionally to ensure it's not obstructed by mud or snow, for example. If using at altitudes below 1,500 meters or for brief stops above this height, for example, stopping on a mountain pass, then there's no adjustment required. However, if longer periods 
above 1500 meters are required, then you should contact your Ford dealer who will need to adjust the heater for this altitude. Beware of the awning when using the heater. If possible, try to have the awning downwind from the exhaust. The water system. There are two water pump switches, one by the master switch to isolate the water faucet and one in the rear near the shower outlet. The control panel for the water system was explained in detail in the water exploring the nugget episode. But here you will see that my fresh water tank is empty and my wastewater tank is also empty. When I put water in this, you will see the symbol like this fill showing you how full the tank is. The system is already fully reviewed in our episode 9 of the Exploring the Nugget series. This episode covers the water heater and how the 12 and 230 volt systems interact so we won't cover that here. There are three strip lights in the main van. One above the kitchen one above the passenger side door and a vertical strip on the driver's side midway along. These are connected by switches in the kitchen and by the driver's side door respectively. Two LED lamps are situated in the pop-up roof and are on adjustable stalks. There is also a detachable LED lamp that can be placed in any of the 12 volt sockets. Two features I love are the dimmer switch function which really changes the mood of the space but also the floor LED strips that make the space feel real quality. A quick word on fuses. As you would expect, all electrical consumers and all cables to the batteries are protected by fuses. The manual outlines their location and ratings and how to replace. You need to replace all fuses like with like. Well, there you have it. We all survived another epic episode. Thanks for sticking with us. I hope you found the content useful. If you have, give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. We read them all and we'll try to reply as soon as possible. Mm -hmm.